Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be showing you how to replace, register and code the battery in your BMW. So then we're going to be working on my BMW 7 series, but this video is going to be applicable to pretty much any modern BMW. Now the battery in my BMW 7 series is no good. It should be kicking out around 920 amps, but it has been tested and it's only kicking out around 500 amps. So it doesn't hold a charge and um, yeah as soon as you turn the ignition on the, the the voltage just drops completely to like 10 uh, volts um, so yeah the battery is no good it does need to be replaced um, if you are you know considering replacing your battery I would recommend getting it tested you know most garages nowadays um, will test your battery for free if you don't have a battery tester so I would recommend getting that done first before you go and shell out for a new battery um, because obviously you do want to know if your battery does need to be replaced first but without further ado let's get outside and let's get cracking now when it comes to the location of the battery on your BMW it's going to depend on which model you have Typically, if it is a BMW 5 or 7 series, it will be in the right side of the boot area. If it's a 1 or a 3 series, it will more than likely be in this space here because you won't have a space for a spare wheel. Now, I must point out, you don't need to remove every single trim panel in the boot area. I've just done that for another reason. To remove the battery on the BMW 7 Series, you just need to lift up this trim piece, remove the spare wheel, and the battery can be slid across once you've removed the bracket. But that has already been removed, like I said. So all we need to do is loosen the eight millimeter nut on the negative terminal, and then remove the 10 millimeter nut on the positive terminal. Yep, should be able to lift that off now. So out of the way. I can lift this off as well. Now I can slide the entire battery across. So just a bit of a comparison then between the two batteries. There is quite a bit of difference in size. This is the original one that was on the car. This battery is dead now, pretty much. Um, as you can see, 105 amp hours, uh, 920 cold cranking amps. Uh, platin, premium, never heard of it. Um, this one is a Vata, of course. Vata, that is the uh, supplies for the OEM batteries, uh, especially in this period. I think they've changed uh, supplies now, but Vata is the OEM um, replacement for this BMW. Uh, as you can see, 110 amp hours and 920 amps. Um, so yeah, this one is slightly bigger um, and should do the job quite nicely. But in terms of installing it, it's just the exact opposite of the removal. Okay, so there we go then. The new battery is now in place and I'm pretty sure this is the maximum size battery for this car. I've actually reinstalled the little securing bracket down there and that is in the, um, the last notch. Um, obviously you can work it this way using these holes so you can go smaller but you can't go any bigger than this battery right here. But yeah, as you can see, negative terminal is on, positive terminal is on, that is all nice and secure. And you can see we do have power because the light is on. I'm just going to test the voltage on the battery and then we'll go ahead and try and get this thing started up. Okay, so if we get in the car, our USB voltmeter is reading 12.3 volts. We'll turn the light off. There we go, 12.4, 12.3. Let's fire it up anyway. The ignition's on, still got 12 volts, which is good. Turn it off, let's fire it up. There we go, seems to fire straight up. Is it charging? 
Yep, yeah, it's charging. Okay then, so now it's time to register and code the battery. So we're gonna go over to the laptop, but what you are going to want to do is make sure you have your decan cable plugged into the OBD2 port. It's usually right in the driver's foot. Well, as you can see, it's plugged in to the laptop. So we'll switch over to the laptop right now. Okay then guys, so when it comes to the registration of the new battery, you can use IMPA and ISTA. I like to use IMPA just for the fact that it's, you know, a lot quicker. So that is what I am going to use, but I will show you how to do it using ISTA D as well, just so you then have the option. So all we're going to do is put the key in the ignition, turn the ignition on, and then we're going to load up IMPA. And IMPA is such a quick an easy uh, piece of software to use. So when you have IMPA loaded up then, you're going to want to select your chassis and you can either hit the F key or you can just go ahead and click it down here. Mine is the E66, um, but yeah, E65, E66, they're both the same chassis. So then you are going to want to find your uh, where your battery is located. Um, so if you go into body, now, in my case, the battery is located in the power module, but yours may be located in the CAS, um, or it could be located in the DME, but you need to find out where it is located. But like I said, in my, in my case, it's located in the power module. So we will go ahead and head there. Uh, and then we are greeted with this menu. You're going to want to click on activate or F6. And then we have two options, control one, control two. It is control two. And then as you can see at the bottom there, register battery replacement, that is F7. And there we go, as easy as that. Register battery replacement activated properly. So that is that now done. And we'll just exit out of IMPA. And then we will load up ISTA D. So you're going to want to go to operations, then read out vehicle data, and then complete identification. This is going to take quite a long time because it has to scan every single module in your car. Um, that's kind of what, and that's kind of one of the drawbacks of ISTA. Pretty much to do anything, you have to um, perform this check first. It's not like IMPA where you can get to it pretty much um, straight away. Now, the speed in which this um, this diagnostic test essentially takes to do is really just going to depend on the speed of your um, of your laptop or your um, tablet, whatever you're using. Um, but it's usually anywhere from two to five minutes to complete. So then, once that has been completed. You can, of course, you know, go in to see your fault data. You can see we have six in the um, fault memory. Uh, I know what those are, so we don't need to go into that today. Um, but to get to the battery registry, you just need to go into vehicle management at the top. And then you want to go on to service functions. And then, you go, and then you're going to want to click on body scroll down to the bottom, a voltage supply of course, battery, register battery replacement, and then register battery replacement. Now, here we can see we have a few options. Now, I, because I've already registered the battery, I don't wanna go through the process again. Very, very easy to do. All you need to do is follow the on-screen uh, instructions. So if you just want to register it, all you do is just click two and then you go through the instructions as they are displayed. Um, or you can also display history of the battery replacement. This just shows you um, the different intervals that the batteries uh, have been programmed uh, to the car essentially. Um, but like I said, because I've already registered the battery using uh, IMPA, I'm just going to end service function. And that is us done on ISTA. And now what I'm gonna do is show you the coding side of things. So let's say you had an 80 amp hour battery in your car before and that was what was last in the registry 
and you want to go ahead and replace it with a 90 amp hour or a 100 amp hour battery you actually need to code that to the car so that it can you know supply the correct charging rates and and everything else so um, we're going to use a piece of software called NCS Expert now it may seem a bit daunting at first but it really isn't too hard to use so we'll go ahead and load that up now and then what you're going to want to do is click on file load profile and we're going to use this rev Revters uh, NCS expert profile. I find this is the best. It allows you to uh, do the most functions. Uh, okay, and then what you're going to want to do is F1, then F3, and then you're going to want to select your chassis, which again, E65. Okay, and then you have to choose the ECU that you want to read, which is the uh, CAS module. Okay, and it's going to start reading my VIN. And then you want to select back and then process ECU and then you want to select the ECU the module that your battery is on in my case it is the power module which should be PMA there we are okay and then what you want to do is select change job Codia Dayton lesson okay so then what you want to do then is select read ecu it'll read the ecu there we go just close that and then what you want to do is head over to your work folder so if we head over into our computer we want to find our work files so we just go into ncs expert uh, work and then we can see we should now have a new trace file so let's just check what the time is now uh, 524 we've just created it so it will be this one here fsw underscore psw so what you want to do is go ahead and open that up now then once you have this file opened up uh, what we're going to want to do is scroll and try to find the battery now I appreciate that you know this is all in German but you should be able to find it it is pretty close to the English spelling I believe so if we scroll down and I believe it's near the bottom uh, there we are battery capaz yeah, okay I'm not going to try and pronounce that but there it is you can see we already have hundred and ten amp hours now here is where you make your changes now obviously I have already changed it to hundred and ten amp hours um, previously to making this video but this is where you make your change so say you want to change it from 80 to 90 you just have to change this number here before the amp hour and if you want to change it to an AGM battery this is how you can do it as well but essentially once you have made that change right there all you're going to want to do is click file save as now you want to save it in the exact same folder but and with the exact same name as well but all you need to do is click dot man as you can see I already have one saved because I've you know done this previously but once you've done that save or already, already exists yes then we can go ahead and close that and then what you want to do is go back into NCS expert then all you need to do is click change job SG coderin that means coding essentially uh, okay and then what you want to do is select execute job I say coding active and then coding ended and that there should then be your battery fully coded to the correct amp hour all you need to do is close this down and there we go okay then guys so there we go that is the battery now replaced registered and coded to my bmw 7 series i hope this video has been helpful 
I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please remember to give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I will see you all in that next one.